Hot dogs have been a money-making machine for MLB for over a century that they will protect at all costs. They don't care that hot dogs have injured players. Send fans to the hospital. One package of hot dogs required the bomb squad to show up and a stadium to be evacuated. A hot dog once got a player arrested after he hit one with a bat, and according to one report, one player died of a hot dog overdose. To MLB, this doesn't matter. Everywhere you go, they are promoting hot dogs, giving them away for $1, making commercials about them, and doing everything they can to make you buy one. Taking in over $100 million a year just from selling hot dogs. However, MLB's cash crop is under attack. There are accusations of unsanitary practices inside stadiums, whistleblowing hot dog vendors saying to never buy one, reports from Time Magazine that people have found rubber bands, razor blades, glass, bones, and insects inside hot dogs. So how does MLB keep selling so many of them? Well, the National Hot Dog and Sausage Council helps. They are a marketing wing of the American Meat Institute. They are basically an organization designed to push out hot dog propaganda and do whatever they can to protect the image of hot dogs, which is being attacked constantly, putting theirs and MOB's pocketbooks at risk. To fight back, they published things like this. In 2021, they published a study that found that the teams that sell the most hot dogs are the teams that win the most games. They're conducting a March Madness type hot dog tournament to find the best hot dog sold at MLB stadiums and even awarded a certificate of bravery to a girl dressed up as a sausage at Miller Park after she participated in the sausage race and was hit by a bat by a player who thought it would be funny. This became a scandal and caused an investigation. Police showed up to the victim's house. She was put on national television to tell her story, and the player was not only suspended, fined by the league, but also arrested for battery. To condemn violence against hot dogs and sausage, the National Hot Dog and Sausage Council awarded the victim a certificate of bravery. The sausage race in Milwaukee began in the 90s as a marketing skit to sell more hot dogs and sausages, which are unavoidable at MLB games. In Texas, they have one that's two feet long. In Arizona, they have one that's three feet long and over 3,000 calories. In Cleveland, you can get one with mac and cheese, bacon, and fruit loops. The Braves had one where the hot dog was the bun and it had macaroni, mashed potatoes, pulled pork, barbecue sauce, and a cherry tomato all in the shape of a sundae. One fan even created his own hot dog variation when he turned a hot dog into a straw at a Yankees game. Unfortunately, they have yet to put this on the menu. The overwhelming amount of temptation in baseball stadiums to buy a hot dog is so strong, even players get sucked in. This season, a East Carolina player fed his teammate a hot dog during a home run celebration. Unfortunately, this was deemed illegal and the player who fed the hot dog was immediately ejected and suspended. A summer league team thought if they did a hot dog eating contest with their players during a game, it would increase hot dog sales. It ended up injuring a player after a hot dog got stuck in his throat. He ended up having to get surgery to get it removed. Worst of all, he got last place in the contest. Gates Brown was a bench player for the Tigers in 1968 who would regularly stuff hot dogs in his jersey so he could eat them in the dugout during games. In one game, he was used as a pinch hitter, which was completely unexpected. Didn't have time to put away his hidden dogs, then went onto the field with hot dogs in his jersey. Ended up hitting a double, sliding into second, and getting mustard, hot dog, and hot dog bun all over himself and the field. He was fined $100 by the team. But no player loved hot dogs more than Babe Ruth. He was possibly the best marketing tool in hot dog history. Famous for eating four hot dogs as a snack in between steaks. He once ate 12 hot dogs in between a double header, got sick, and had to miss the second game. 
he once thought it would be funny to steal and eat a hot dog from a kid in the stands in the middle of a game. The kid started crying, and he had to give him an autograph and $20. And in 1925, it was reported that he died from eating too many hot dogs. This report was wrong, but Babe Ruth was sent to the hospital. The official story was that he had eaten 12 to 18 hot dogs, caused him to get so sick that he required surgery and had to miss multiple months of the season. In reality, he likely had an ailment that was caused by his excessive drinking and the reports of a hot dog overdose were just a cover up. Babe Ruth was the face of baseball as well as the face of hot dogs, growing the connection between the two. When you think of a baseball game, you think of hot dogs and Babe Ruth is a massive reason why but not the only reason. In fact, hot dogs may have actually been invented at a baseball game. Hot dogs were brought to America in the 1800s, but were served without a bun. To prevent people from burning their hands, they were given gloves to eat hot dogs with. However, this is less than ideal for vendors' profits because many people wouldn't return the gloves. Because of this, vendors created a new type of glove. They called it a bun, creating the modern hot dog. The origin of the bun is cloudy at best, but according to many, the first bun was introduced by a vendor at a New York Giants game at the Polo Grounds in 1901. The bun gave fans the perfect food. It was cheap, created little to no mess. It was perfect to eat in a stadium seat without a table because it didn't require utensils and could be eaten with one hand, leaving the other hand open for a drink. It was the perfect stadium food. And over 100 years later, hot dogs are still the most popular food at MLB games. At Fenway Park, they make 12% of food sales alone. And the Dodgers sell over 3.5 million of them in a single season. But are these hot dogs that are eaten millions of times a year actually safe to eat? But before we get to that, a quick word from today's sponsor. One of my favorites, HelloFresh, has teamed up with Factor, a meal service that delivers straight up delicious meals directly to your door. You can choose from 34 plus chef prepared meals, choose from 45 plus add-ons to replenish your snack supplies. You can skip the trip to the grocery store, skip the chopping, skip the prepping, and skip the cleaning too. Factor has it all. If you're trying to stay lean for the beach, try the delicious, dietitian approved calorie smart meals with around or less than 550 calories per serving. If you're trying to stay jacked, try the protein plus meals with 30 grams of protein or more per serving. And if you're trying to stay clean, try their keto, vegan, or veggie options. Factor has been sending me meals and I've loved every single one of them. The delivery is quick and easy. The cooking process is even easier. The cleaning process almost doesn't even exist and it is way faster than groceries shopping while also being significantly cheaper than takeout. And now it's even cheaper. Head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code baseballdozen50 to get 50% off your first factor box. That's baseballdozen50. Do it right now. Nowadays, teams sell everything from sushi, alligator corn dogs in Texas, a $150 Wagyu cheeseburger in Atlanta, and a ton of other high-end items. But none of this is as profitable as hot dogs. They're easier to make, have less labor costs, can be stored longer without going bad, and have some of the highest profit margins of any other food. If teams could, they would only sell hot dogs because they're the most profitable. Which may be why several teams have hot Hot dog races on the field. This season, MLB has been running an entire TV commercial about hot dogs. Not a brand of hot dogs, just hot dogs in general. If you go to a game, almost every concession stand sells hot dogs. Even if you successfully pass these stands without buying one, a person with a box of them will surely come to your seat and try to sell you one. They are unavoidable and temptations are everywhere. But there's also been a ton of attacks on hot dogs. Like the bold claim from the University of Michigan that says eating a hot dog takes 36 minutes off your life. In 2014, an expose on stadium dogs featured a stadium worker telling the Huffington Post that she would never advise anyone
anyone to eat a stadium dog due to the practice of cooking them, then recooking unsold dogs in old hot dog water. In 2010, Outside the Lines found that 28% of professional sports venues had at least half of their food vendors with major health code violations. In 2015, the Royals did a dollar dog night. The one dollar dogs were disgusting. Fans started posting pictures of the dogs and complaining that they were moldy and unedible. Despite the backlash online, they sold 60,000 of them. By comparing the attendance to the previous home game, Dollar Dog Night attracted 19,000 extra fans, making them around 500 grand extra just from ticket sales. If you count the price of parking, merch sales, food sales, this one dollar dog night comfortably made the Royals over one million dollars. 60% of fans say that if they could only have one ballpark food, it would be a hot dog. They don't care how contaminated some claim them to be. Just ask the Phillies, who may have the richest history of hot dogs in sports, and also one of the most controversial and dangerous. They invented the hot dog cannon. Introduced in 1996, it is usually wielded by the Philly fanatic, who uses it to shoot hot dogs at people in the crowd. One fan got hit in the face with one of these hot dogs and had to be rushed to the hospital. Luckily for the Phillies, she was a good sport about it and never sued. The hot dog cannon also caused fans to evacuate, the bomb squad to show up, and a package to be blown up in 2008 when the team did a promotional shoot to show off their world famous hot dog gun. The dogs were sent to the stadium and wrapped in white paper to fit in the gun, but after the shoot, the boxes were left laying around, when during batting practice, somebody reported it as a suspicious package. The police showed up, thought it could have been a bomb, evacuated the fans, had the bomb squad show up, and detonate the package. Turns out, it was just a bunch of hot dogs that were meant to be used in the hot dog cannon. But what Philly is really known for is their dollar dog nights, which historically have been in complete chaos. They've been notorious for decades, so notorious that one fan still has one from 2003. He was at the last Dollar Dog Night in Veterans Stadium, realized he was part of history, and kept it in his freezer, only removing it to show off to friends for the past 20 years. He says it is currently for sale. In April 2008, fans threw hot dogs at Philly's closer Ryan Madsen as they lost to the Nationals on Dollar Dog Day. In 2010, a fan ran onto the field, got taken down with a taser, making national news. This was Dollar Dog Night. A fan was arrested and sentenced to 90 days in prison for throwing up on an 11-year-old on Dollar Dog Night. In 2022, the Phillies only scheduled two dollar dog nights. Phillies fans were so pissed, one of them complained to the senator. The Phillies saw this and brought back another dollar dog night. That year, a man even claimed dollar dog night saved his life after setting his own personal record by eating eight dogs. The next day, he woke up with a massive stomach ache. After the pain didn't go away, he finally went to the doctor, found out he had cancer, and started treatment right away. Since they caught it early, less than a year later, he is cancer free, just because he ate way too many dogs at Dollar Dog Night. This year, the Phillies had three Dollar Dog Nights. The estimated wait for a dog in the first game was over 30 minutes. They ate an insane 74,000 hot dogs, and towards the end of the game, threw hundreds of them onto the field. The second one sold out again, beat the previous record, selling over 80,000 dogs. And once again, towards the end of the game, hot dogs started coming onto the field. The third dollar dog night broke the hot dog selling record with 88,000 and invented the first ever dollar dog wave, where the entire stadium did the wave while throwing their dogs into the air. These three dollar dog nights brought around 12,000 extra fans per game. Based on the average ticket sale, the Phillies made around $400,000 extra just from tickets, which only account for about one third of the revenue a team makes on game day. Meaning, in total, each dollar dog night made the Phillies around $1.2 million extra. 
According to the National Hot Dog Sausage Council, MLB fans buy and eat around 20 million hot dogs a year. The average hot dog cost $5.13, meaning MLB teams combined easily take in over $100 million just from hot dogs. Even when hot dogs are sold for $1, they're extremely profitable. Even when the lines are extremely long, fans will buy tens of thousands of them. And even when fans start throwing them on the field, teams don't care because they're making a ton of money. And even when news report after news report says these hot dogs are contaminated, fans will still vote them as their number one stadium food. Hot dogs are the cash crop of baseball and there's nothing you, me, or anybody can do to stop it.